minutes past the hour. It ranks among our greatest human endeavors, going to the moon. Houston, you're a go for landing, over. It was a staggering feat of engineering. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. But one that carried with it astronomical risks. We got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. Godspeed, John Glenn. The men of NASA's Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs were indeed national heroes. But they were husbands and fathers, too. And the wives who stayed behind while their other halves explored other worlds were part of a sisterhood with an orbit all its own. I think we girls all shared something that no other group of women shared in, in history. I have a scrapbook for each flight. Marilyn Lovell was in the headlines right along with her husband, astronaut Jim Lovell. And this is where we find out exactly where we are in space. In 1968, he was the command module pilot on Apollo 8. It makes you realize just what you have back there on Earth. But Apollo 8 isn't why they make movies about Jim Lovell. Houston, we have a problem. His heroism, later depicted by Tom Hanks, helped avoid disaster aboard Apollo 13. But it was no movie for Marilyn Lovell. Okay, now let's everybody keep cool. For four days in April of 1970, every agonizing moment of her husband's dire situation was playing out not only in Marilyn's living room, but across the country. The only goal of Apollo 13, to get the men home safely. As the years went on, I thought, what would I have done if, if I had become a widow? I mean, what would I have done? From his earliest days as an astronaut, his career came first. Even when Marilyn found herself pregnant, she hid it from him for four months, fearing that it might ruin his chances of going to the moon. And I went, let's see, four months, five, six, seven. <laughs> You're going to be having the baby while I'm in space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And don't say anything. <laughs> if it all sounds like the astronaut version of Mad Men, well, it was, says author Lily Capel. They weren't being flung into space, but they were dealing with the stress of having their husband ride this giant rocket where no man had ever gone before, and also sort of projecting the perfect American family image. She compiled many of their very real wives' tales in a book. Each woman, I think, dealt with um, the mission of having a husband in space on her own terms. Jeannie and Charlie Bassett bought the house, one house down from us. And yeah. The wives, like and Sue Bean, once married to Apollo 12 astronaut Alan Bean, used to live close to one another. Buzz and Joan lived right behind us. There was a gate that I could walk through. And, you guys would always uh -huh, come back and forth? Across, uh, you know, go and have tea in the afternoon with... Her. <laughs> in the late 1960s, this neighborhood outside Houston was kind of a space suburbia. My children loved it, and their friends were here. And I became pretty independent living by myself with the children because the fellows didn't have time to do the checkbook. They didn't have time to do the yard very often. We gathered Sue and three other astro wives together. There were certain things you couldn't do. You know, you couldn't go outside in your bathrobe. You had to be dressed, and you had to have your makeup on and your hair combed. You couldn't get drunk at a party. And you couldn't drink too much. <laughs> Jeannie Bassett Robinson had proudly been astronaut Charlie Bassett's wife. Jane Dreyfus was once married to Pete Conrad, the third man on the moon. And Barbara Cernan Butler is the former wife of Jean Cernan, the last man on the moon. How much of a pressure was there to be the perfect American family? Well, I think we knew we had to be because we didn't want to have anything upset our husband's flights. We all wanted our husbands to be the first, or, or at least we wanted them to be sure and be up there at the top of the list. Was that hard? I mean, were you always sort of watching your piece well, we of were cute? perfect, would you? No. <laughs> they can laugh about it now. Three, two. But the stress of knowing, or sometimes not knowing, the danger their husbands were in took a toll each and every day. You face it, you have to cope with it. Jeannie learned to cope early. Her husband, Charlie Bassett, was training for Gemini 9 when he died in a plane crash, along with fellow astronaut Elliot C. The first people at Jeannie's house that day weren't from NASA. They were other wives. 
America's first three Apollo astronauts were trapped and killed by a flight... In 1967, they raced to each other's side after the Apollo 1 tragedy, too, when three astronauts lost their lives in a fire during a routine test. What words of comfort did you have? What did you say? I don't know that you have you to don't say anything. You, just, you don't know what Your to presence say. means so much to them. I mean, we were really close. But while the wives have remained close to this day, most of their marriages fell apart. We were just young and inexperienced and not ready for a lot of it. In fact, only a handful of astronaut marriages lasted. Jim and Marilyn Lovell are among the lucky ones. They celebrated their 62nd anniversary just last month. The moon may have gotten to his head, but it went to his heart, too. And it's right there on the coast of the Sea of Tranquility, right there. Wow. He actually named part of the moon after Maryland. I thought to myself, that would be a good little mountain to name after my wife. And then there was the Christmas present he sent to her doorstep while he was still in space. And of course, I opened it, and it was a mink jacket. A mink jacket? With a little card in there saying, Merry Christmas for the man in the moon. That's class. That was... No guy is ever going to be able to top that. You realize that? <laughs> I have to admit, that was classic. <laughs> that was pretty classic. It took me some time to think about it. One, and we have liftoff at 2.13. Among all those mid-century images of dutiful wives watching their husbands rocket to glory. It's a beauty. The wives of Apollo 12 perhaps sum it up best. Despite all the trials and all the hardships that the wives endured, being a part of the space race still leaves them feeling proud, thrilled, and happy. <laughs>